I'm Paul Daddy, and this channel is Paul Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue. Today, I'm trying out party ribs for the first time. Now, party ribs are pork ribs that are sliced up before they're smoked. So cooking them like this should give them bark on all sides. So let's find out what all the fuss is about. Today, I have three racks. Now, two of them are already cut up St. Louis style, and the other one, I'll have to trim them to St. Louis style. Now, the question is, do you have to trim your ribs to St. Louis style? No, of course not but I want to be putting my best foot forward and serve the most appealing product that I can. So with that in mind, then the answer would be yes. I definitely have to trim mine up St. Louis style. Now, I usually remove that membrane. And the other question is, do we have to remove the membrane? And the answer is no, you don't. Quite possibly, nobody would even notice the difference if you don't. Now, Goldie's Barbecue is the number one barbecue joint in the state of Texas, as listed on the Texas monthly list and they don't remove that membrane. So that being said, I'm kind of setting my ways and that membrane is coming off. But if I was gonna be smoking 30 racks of ribs every day, then maybe I'd consider leaving it on. And if I did leave it on, I would score it up in a diamond pattern and that would give the rub a little bit better penetration. How you treat that membrane is up to you. The next thing I like to do is trim down any of that excess skirt that's sticking out. Now, if there's any tags or excess fat on the ribs, you can trim some of that off too. Now, this is where we make them up into party ribs. You want to take that rack, flip it over, neat side down, that makes the bone side up, and then we're going to slice that rack into individual ribs. So try to leave each bone its fair share of the meat. Next, lay the ribs out on a wire rack. Now I'm using olive oil as a binder and each side is going to get a spray of the olive oil and then I'm going to season it up with Goldie's Barbecue All-Purpose Rub. For your convenience, I'll leave an Amazon link in the description below. Now you don't have to buy this rub, you can easily make a version of it at home. It's simply two parts black pepper, one part kosher salt, and one part Lowry seasoned salt. Just remember, each time you use it, keep it thoroughly mixed up. Now, when the ribs are seasoned on all sides, then we place them back on that wire rack with the meat side up. The three racks of ribs are going into my Yoder pellet smoker, and I let it run at 150 degrees Fahrenheit for the first hour. Now, if I was in a great big hurry, I'd just simply start at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. But the low temperature startup, it definitely get a little more smoky flavor to your ribs, especially if you're using a pellet smoker. Now after the first hour at 150, I worked that temperature up to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And every 30 minutes or so, those racks can be rotated so they'll cook a little bit more evenly. After about the second hour, those ribs should be in the 165 to 175 degrees Fahrenheit temperature range. And when they get in this range, it's time to pan the ribs. I'm using a foil pan that I line with foil. And here's where you add your barbecue sauce or whatever flavor profile that you're going after. Today, I'm making sweet ribs. In the bottom of the pan on the foil, we're gonna add some squeezed parquet, then turbinado sugar. And of course, brown sugar also works here, but the turbinado is a lot easier to work with. And then we'll follow up that sugar with a generous amount of honey. Then add in some tiger sauce. I'll leave a link for tiger sauce in the description below. We want to place the ribs in the pan, meat side down, and then you're going to repeat the process on top of the ribs. Parquet, turbinado, honey, and then tiger sauce. Now cover that pan up with heavy duty foil and it goes back in the smoker at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm cooking some of these ribs to the 204, 205 degree Fahrenheit range. At one pan, I'm cooking a little bit longer. I'm taking it up to 210, 212 degree Fahrenheit range. Now, normally when you get into the 212 degree temperature, you can expect the ribs to begin to start falling off the bone, but that really wasn't the case with the party ribs. I'm thinking they just got a little bit tougher. So keep that in mind when you make these. They weren't bad, but they were a little bit tougher. Since party ribs are seasoned on all sides, they're cooked on all sides, then the party ribs pack a little bit more flavor punch than traditional ribs. My wife still prefers Paw Daddy's traditional ribs the best. We have a 16 year old grandson that absolutely loves spare ribs and he liked both versions of the party ribs over my traditional ribs. So I think next time that I make party ribs and I will be making them again, 
I'm gonna pull them off around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. All in all, I'd say that party ribs are definitely something that needs to be in your barbecue repertoire. Now, it'll certainly be in mine. I definitely recommend that you give them a try. Be sure and hit that like button on your way out. Consider subscribing. And I hope to see you next time at Paw Daddy's Blind Hog Barbecue. <laughs>